Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial. For a while now I've been going through the Monster Hunter world, the board game box, and I've been painting up each of the monsters found in the Ancient Forest core box. And today we're gonna to continue that trend by painting up another one of these gorgeous models. So far we have done the Great Jagras and the Turbicadache, and today we're gonna to be painting up the Anjanath. To start with, I'm going to prime him in black, a nice dark base coat, just so if I miss anything later on, it's going to be nice and black and painted like for the shadow areas. Then what I started doing is painting up all of this skin on the Anjanath, and to do this I'm using an airbrush, I'm using a, sort of a dark fleshy tone, like a sort of dark pink, with a little bit of red mixed in there, just so that it's not quite as sort of dull. I'm giving this a nice coating all over, I'm letting the black sort of help me in some of those shadowed areas, applying it a little bit thinner in those areas, but everywhere else I'm making sure it's a nice coverage so that it's this colour as like a nice base to wake up from. Once that's all on, I'm going in with a lighter sort of, just not quite bright pink, but a lighter version of this colour, a little bit less red mixed in, a little bit more pink mixed in for some of the highlights, just to sort of show the shadow underneath and the lighter areas on top. I'm then going back in on the fur along his back and tidying up that, adding in some black and then spraying on a little bit of purple to start adding in the colour on there. And once that was on, I started adding in some of the paler sections like on his uh, legs. There's some pale bits in between some of the blackened scales that we'll paint in later, like underneath his neck. He's got like a little bit of a sort of neck sack. I'm not sure what that's called. Painting that in a paler colour just so there's a little bit of variation across the model. With the majority of the airbrushing done and out of the way, now it's time to start adding in some details. So I'm going to start picking out some of these scales. So on his nose, on his legs, there's some scales on there that are black with the sort of creamy, brighter colour gaps in between. So the only way to do this really was to spray them a brighter colour and then go in with black just to pick out the scales. Once these were done, I had actually looked really, really good. I was really, really happy with how these looked. I added this detail across the model, so on his arms, his legs, on his nose. I then added a quick dry brush of a lighter purple along the fur on his back just to pick out that detail a little bit more than the airbrush just to add in again that little bit of right in colour. And then I started adding in some very scratchy highlights on the fur. I'd got plenty of nice blends and some transitions using the airbrush earlier on but I wanted to have some nice stark highlights on there just on the very edges on like the top folds and the sort of top areas again just to pick out that detail and just so that it doesn't look quite as sort of airbrushed and, and soft. I wanted that scratchy highlight detail in there as well. For some of the other details, like the tongue and the mouth, it's just a case of going in with a red, adding some purple, adding a wash just to shade all that in. I went in with a sort of bright ivory colour on all the claws, on his feet and on his, on his forearms, and then going around that on the teeth as well. Again, this is not anything amazingly overcomplicated or revolutionary. This is very standard for claws and teeth. And once I'd done that, I just went in with a brown wash or a sepia wash, I think it was actually, and just added that and just sort of dragged it away so it was darker on one end than compared to the other. Nice, easy way to get all these little details done and it really finished the model off. As with the other models, I'm going for the same sort of basing technique. I'm adding some mud texture to the base to start with. And then once that is all on and dry, I'm going to add a little bit of fast drying basing glue from Geek Gaming Scenics and then apply the base ready stuff on there. Now, a couple of people have asked me what the green stuff is that I've been putting on top of the glue and on top of the mud and stuff. This is actually the moss effect from Dirty Down. I found that if I apply that onto the glue, then when the glue sets and it seeps into the basing material that I'm putting on top, you get a bit of sort of green seeping through as well, and it adds a nice bit of variation to the base ready that I put on top there. Anyway, that's another tutorial done. Stay tuned for the Rathalos coming up in the near future. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave us a like and a comment down below if you did. Until next time, guys, enjoy your hobby.